serving it. Okay. Good. Hello, this is Bill Schwinn, General Manager of Sun City West. This is a budget presentation, um, a little bit of a precursor to the Governing Board workshop leading up to Friday's meeting. Um, but this community meeting, normally we'd be meeting at Palm Ridge or one of our other recreation centers uh, in front of a large group of people, kind of walking through our proposed budget for the upcoming year. I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about the highlights um, as far as our budget goes. And so we'll be looking at the operational expenses, our operational revenues, where our annual dues are in, in, in our fee system, and then we'll get into some capital funding. As far as our capital funding expenditures, we'll talk a little bit about water conservation and our range of risk when it comes to our reserve funds. Operational expenses are typically defined by everything that we do throughout the fiscal year, how we pay our salaries, how we take care of our operating expenses, all of our utilities, our taxes, our licensing, and a lot of landscaping scenarios. But the things I want to highlight on this particular slide really have to do with the impact of minimum wage. As you well know, beginning in July, our state government have, has implemented a $12 an hour rate for um, part-time employees, in which constitutes about 52% of our entire um, workforce here. So it has a fairly significant impact when it comes to um, adding a few dollars, or actually this is a dollar a raise, they were at 11. So it, it's a, up close to a $500,000 impact on our, on our budget. And the other big item um, is really having to do with some insurance rates that go up. Um, over the course of the year, on a national level, various things happen, and insurance companies alter rates. It's really not so much a reflection on us and what we have done over the past year, but on the nation and our insurance carriers over a whole, um, those rates are all kind of interlinked when it comes to how rates are, are determined. So those are the two big increases that we see as far as our operating expenses going into the next fiscal year. One, one slide back, Katie, if you don't mind. Thank you. On the uh, expense side, as you can see, 63% of our operational budget goes for wages and salaries and benefits. On top of that, the next biggest item are our utility costs. So close to 75% of all of our operational revenue really goes for people and power, like I like to say. But that's the way this, really, this pie chart really breaks down. Uh, the next bigger item there that you'll see is uh, repair and maintenance. And that basically ensures that we are taking care of all of the amenities here the best way we know how. And I think if you drive around this community and utilize our facilities, you can see that that money is very wisely spent. Let's take a little step back. I talked about the 52% of our, our employee base being, being uh, uh, part-time. And you can see over the last four or five years how that's impacted us. And so this year, raising it to $12 has a 9% hit. So it is sizable. Like I said, it's close to $500,000. And uh, that is something that we just have to incorporate into our operational expenses. So how do we pay for our operational expenses? Through the revenues that we generate. In this fiscal year, um, we were planning a 3.5% increase on our annual dues. As you can see, that generates about $300,000 amount for us to help Here, offset a lot um, of our, we were planning a 3.5% into the uh, minimum wage increase. And then the next largest number you'll see on there are golf fee increases. Um, we've met with the golf committee. Uh, we have not raised or touched our golf fees for about a three-year period. Um, we took a hard look at what the golf course rates are in and around our community. We are still very, very comparable. But really the main thrust behind the increase really has to do with the golf committee and the golfers stepping up to really help offset some rather large expenses that we have coming down the road when it comes to water conservation and irrigation uh, system repairs. Our, our, we have four golf courses that we're focusing on that were all built 
30 plus years ago, and the uh, facilities are uh, in serious need of irrigation repairs as far as their system goes. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this presentation. Again, operational revenues, where do they come from? The biggest tickets that we have bringing money into our association, obviously, are the annual membership dues as well as golf fees. So those are the two big hitters when it comes to our operational revenues. Let's talk a little bit about membership. Currently, our fees are $480 annually for everyone on a lease um, in the properties here within Sun City West. A 3.54% increase gets that up to $497. And it's all calculated out below that to individuals who either rent their homes, tenant activity cards, associate member fees, and those types of things. And that basically in the shaded area on this particular slide shows how that 3.54% uh, increase gets calculated out. When we look at comparables of other Sun City establishments throughout our country, you can see currently that we're sitting at $960 um, annually for a, for two owner households. Um, that is an extreme bargain. Um, looking around some of the other facilities here out in Goodyear, Arizona, out in Estancia, some newer the Dell Webb communities, they're paying sizably more money on an annual basis to live in those communities, but they don't have half the amenities and, and the niceness of the amenities, I think, that exist inside the walls here at Sun City West. And so comparatively, when we look at other communities and, and what we do here, um, I think we are a national leader when it comes to uh, what we have to offer for the amount that we charge, and we hope to keep fees as low as we possibly can, incrementally increase those along the way so that you don't see huge rises in fees. And what do these fees cover? A lot of folks this time of year, especially with the COVID virus that we're dealing with and a lot of facilities being closed, a lot of people misconstrue these fees as for recreation center fees. Similarly, if you were going to pay to go to a LA Fitness or another health club association, these are not monthly dues. These are annual fees that help cover everything that we do, from staffing to all the benefits that, that um, employees receive to all of our litigation. This doesn't stop just because we closed our doors as far as a couple of recreation centers go. Um, we have bills to pay. We have audit fees, we have utilities and insurance that goes on and everything else that we do. Um, landscape doesn't stop and maintenance doesn't stop simply because we close the door. This is, this is something that's ongoing and it is generally very important that we continue to do that so we can stay on top of the facilities and, and make sure that they are in tip top shape and in, in good order when you want to use them. So the three and a half percent essentially rolls out to a five, five cent per day increase or $1.40 a month. And as you can see, the years that we do not increase over the past 20 years, you see large spikes in fees in the recurring years after that to play catch up due to um, various types of cost increases along the line and utilities, inflation, those types of things. And it's very, very difficult and somewhat um, tough on, on members when their fees see exorbitant increases like you can see there. But on a moderate level, if you can keep your fees generating in a, at, a, at a very moderate pace, I'm talking a nickel a day, um, they're, they're somewhat a lot more tolerable, I think, than large, large spikes. I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about golf and the sports pavilion when it comes to when it comes to fees. Um, everything you see highlighted here was, was an, an increase as far as this upcoming fiscal year goes beginning in July. Various types of rates uh, exist, whether it's resident rate and non-resident rate, uh, family guest pass, um, public play, frequency of play all come into play here. But really the big, the big hitter um, on this is really we're trying to capture a little more money from the outside play from non-residents, and there's a little bit of a spike in the uh, unlimited annual golf card um, for anyone who purchased 
purchases one of those. And so breaking this down a little bit farther, you can see here, this is, this is where um, the former slide was all highlighted. And here you can see by dollar amount how much those fees have jumped this particular year. Again, I spoke earlier about these fees not being increased over a three-year period, um, but really keeping up with the, the cost of, of maintaining golf courses and operating these facilities. You know, this is the generation of this money annually um, brings in, I would say, close to $8 million to help offset the general operation of these golf courses as we move along. And the same with the sports pavilion. A little bit of a fee increase here. Um, we're hoping um, um, that this kind of can help offset a little bit of the cost associated with a new scoring system that Barry's liking to install over there. And we also look at uh, surrounding bowling facilities and and as far as comparable rates go, we are still uh, on the lower end of the curve and offering a great facility, if not one of the busiest facilities in the state of Arizona, at a very, very reasonable rate. We'll talk a little bit about capital funding and where that money comes from. The three biggest portions of our capital funding sources come from our annual asset preservation fee. That's any time a house is sold here within the walls of Sun City West, a $3,500 fee is charged to the new residents. Dividends and interest on our reserve fund pick up some money for us, as well as any savings that we can come across through the operational um, expenses talked about earlier in our program. Those monies are carried forward and moved into our capital program for the following year. Talk a little bit about the asset preservation fee. Here's a brief history of what we've been doing over the last five years. In 2016, our rate was, I believe, $3,000. So in, in 17, 18, and 19, you can see a little bit of a, a spike up in those figures, but that was because the fees were increased by $500, and we're just short of about $4.5 million annually when it comes to assisting our capital improvement program um, as far as providing um, uh, new construction and capital improvements along the line. So it's a very lucrative program for us. Um, we take advantage of the home sales um, so we don't have to continue raising exorbitant fees for the owner, the owner members. And so it's a little bit of a buy-in from the new owners helping to provide all the wonderful facilities and the new trends and demographics and everything that we try to address on an annual basis. I'm going to move over to capital expenditures now and introduce Carl Wilhelm who is our capital project manager, and he's going to walk through you a, a lot of the capital projects, um, I believe over $100,000. So Carl, take it from here. Thank you, Bill. Um, in our slide presentation here, now we're going to cover golf courses, recreation centers, and discuss allowances. Golf R&R &R and new, we have proposed a budget of $2 million Recreation Center R&R, $2,716,000. Rec Center New Projects, $829,000. Our annual allowances, $435,000 for a proposed budget total of $5,991,000. The Grandview Golf Course Irrigation Replacement um, was a proposed project in this year's budget that is being delayed until fiscal year 2021. Uh, we've had much uh, deliberation over this. The total for that project was $4,898,000, and uh, we have deemed that uh, based on the few unknowns, uh, state requirements, discussions with the water department on whether or not um, uh, what our full capacity of um, turf reduction and uh, what size of irrigation replacement should be uh, established. Golf capital budget repair and replacement new projects, two million. Golf maintenance equipment, seven hundred and thirty four thousand. You can see that the hundred and five thousand dollars average cost per course. We do have seven courses and this involves our mowers, tractors, aerators, grinders, and other equipment. In this year's budget, we're proposing Desert Trails Bunker Project, 290000 
This would be the last of the seven courses, a useful life of 13 more years, and it improves our playability. Golf maintenance vehicles, again, spread over seven courses, averages 36K. These are our work trucks, our larger utility vehicles and utility carts. Pebble Brook Golf Course Shoreline Repair, number 18, 221,000. And the Putting Green Replacement, 90,000 at Pebble Brook. This is an installation of 1,200 linear feet block wall. Establishes erosion control and water conservation around that lake and provides improved playability. Pebble Brook Golf Course parking lot. Uh, this is a repair replacement item. It has met its useful life. We are planning on doing a mill and resurface of the crumbling overlay and correcting the unsafe walking and driving conditions. Our next proposed item is the golf course golf carts, 25 in quantity at 123,600. Our currently our current inventory's average age is 9.5 and reduces repair and downtime. Our golf carts are not gas. They our golf carts are gas, not electric. And typically if fleet carts last 4 years, our average 9 years. Due to small fleets at each course, we run out of carts during the November March season. Not only do we lose our car rent, we lose green fees too. The proposed capital budget broken down by 100,000 plus items, again, is the golf maintenance equipment, Desert Trails Bunker Project, golf maintenance vehicles, Pebble Brook Shoreline Repair, number 18, Pebble Brook's Pro Shop Parking Lot, golf carts, Pebble Brook Replace Putting Green, and then all of the other items totaling less than 1000 for a total of $111,000. I'd like to move on to the Recreation Center's R&R. Our proposed budget is $2,716,000 for repair and replacement items. And after much discussion um, of the last few months, the Recreation Center's new capital items total 829,000. These are the items listed here for repair and replacement, over $100,000, Palm Ridge parking lot lighting. This involves a mill and replacement of the Palm Ridge parking lot in its entirety and a full lighting and wiring renovation, um, converting the existing lights to LED energy conservation program. The scoring system at the sports pavilion. Our yearly review and repair and replacement of HVAC units throughout the community. Beardsley roof and library roofs this year are due for restoration. These are our flat roof areas. They are tested for their estimated useful life and this reestablishes our new coatings so that we can maintain an average of a 15 year warranty. Finally, in the $100,000 plus item list is the R.H. Johnson flooring replacement. This is a safety uh, issue, removing and replacing the tile and creating uh, safer walking conditions. The next portion of this list are items under $100,000 that total the previous slides, 864,313. Uh, this list has various items from landscaping, vehicles, Beardsley pool heater replacements, replacing the mini golf carpeting, flooring projects throughout Beardsley, Sports Pavilion and Palm Ridge, audiovisual, library entry door replacement and countertops in, in the interior check-in areas. Palm Ridge video projection and sound system improvements. Pickleball courts resurfacing 11 through 18. We previously did 1 through 10 last year. Sports Pavilion sprinkler head replacement. And the Sports Pavilion counters and display case reface. New construction items listed on this slide are the metal shop for $410,000. 
and additional funds of the 250 from approved last year's capital budget, FY1920. The suggestion of the Beardsley Park Transformer, converting Memo's restaurant from electric appliances to gas appliances, and running a new gas line to the restaurant. A Coons expansion uh, that's currently in progress that began May 4th. Uh, the new expansion in addition requires a fitness equipment in the expanded fitness room. Recreation centers equipment throughout all the rec recreation centers that have met their useful life. This would be replacing chairs, tables, miscellaneous items like trash bins. Uh, the east property fence replacement between Hillcrest and R.H. Johnson. And then again, the new addition at the Coons project happening in this current budget uh, requires the Palo Verde, Palo, Verde, Palo Verde Patchers new room to be established with furniture. Our allowances include items such as safety and structural integrity, changing demographics, energy conservation, and ADA compliance upgrades, as, long as, as well as golf-related items like well pump, motor replacement, and then facilities maintenance, equipment, and boilers, and then our other departments like information technology. These allowances are for unknowns that come up throughout the year, and we have funds set aside so that items can be taken care of. The FY 2021 capital improvement project budget being proposed is for $5,991,271. This slide demonstrates a full entire breakdown of the previous slides that we have spoke about in a breakdown fashion from the highest amount all the way down to the lowest amount, line item by line item. This following slide, when we are proposing this budget, if concerns are about an approved budget in its entirety, these, slide, these items here are what we are planning on putting on a potential uh, delay list. So if the year's finances should change, if there's any questions in um, our COVID-19 circumstances current, or should something arise throughout the year, we have set this list here as an optional list for potential uh, projects to be delayed. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this proposal for our budget. Uh, Bill Schwinn will talk about water conservation. Thank you, Carl. Real quickly, I just want to touch on um, one of the highlighted items here in this year's budget, and that is water conservation. As you may or may not know, Sun City West resides within the Phoenix AMA, which is an active management area when it comes to groundwater use. We use groundwater to irrigate all of our golf courses. And over the next couple of years, there are some game-changing game elements that have taken place at the state level that require um, organizations like ours to document every drop of water that we throw. Um, that's measured in acre feet. And so on an annual basis, Todd Patty and his crew do all the water analysis for us. Um, all of our wells are regulated. All of our sprinkler systems are regulated. So we know down to the acre foot as to how much water we're throwing on these golf courses. And what the state is trying to get a handle on is how much um, water should be allowed per each active golf course. And so some of our older golf courses, um, this case Grandview, for instance, is 37 years old and it has a lot of turf, somewhere in the vicinity of about 140 acres. If you were to build a golf course today, the state of Arizona would limit you to 90 acres of turf. And so plan four of the AMA plan and plan five of the AMA plan um, set guidelines as to how we get there, and it's called deturfing golf courses. And so we are negotiating with them as far as trying to understand their rules and their timelines as far as getting this accomplished. However, um, if your golf course was built prior to 1984, you're grandfathered in and you do not need to deturf your grass. 
um, down to the 90-acre limit. Now, I do not have a document to share with you with any kind of legal signature on that, and that is one of the things that we're trying to get accomplished as we speak here today. And so the deadlines on Plan 4 and Plan 5 extend out to 2023, 2025, and that's part of the reason that that $4.8 million project we talked about earlier as far as deturfing Grandview and putting a new sprinkler system in have been deferred at least a year until we can get so on solid ground when it comes to the Arizona Department of Water Resources and some water conservation fact. I'm going to turn the page over now to Mr. Peter Finelli, our CFO, and he can talk to you a little bit about what our reserve fund does and what we consider our range of risk. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Bill. The reserve funds are determined against what we call the reserve study, and a percentage equates of that annually to what we call the reserve fully funded percent. In other words, if all the repair and replacement future needs were a certain dollar amount, how many funds do you have in the bank essentially to cover those future needs? Uh, what you see in front of you here is what we call our what if program. And essentially it takes the actual funds in the first column to the left and gets us to where we were as of June 30th of last year. And then, of course, it's a moving target as to projected how much you're going to take in in your inflows and how much you estimate to send out in your outflows. And so as we exited out of, as we prepare to exit out of June 30th of this year, we are estimating we'll be in the 47% range. So what uh, the highlighted components are intended for me to uh, tell you how much variability can happen on some of the items we've been hearing quite a bit about. The first one highlighted at the top of the budget column is a currently our operating excess. As uh, Bill referred to, uh, there are some discussions going on about membership dues. There is some discussion about how much of this on a normal basis is what annual uh, owner members put into the reserve fund. And generally speaking, that million five divided about by about 30,000 members means that you're paying about $50 into your repair and replacement out of your $480. So that 10% that or so is actually much lower than what you see in a lot of communities. So as Bill referred to, you're, you're doing very well in that regard. Down to uh, the second highlighted item is just the little under $6 million that Carl referred to. And this was the fully funded capital spend. And what we identified was that if some of the inflows at the top, whether that's APF rates on number of home sales or interest or just the excess of uh, operating income have any uh, trouble spots throughout the year, we're determining that we uh, can put forward a delayed capital list that the administration has identified that would take down that $6 million by about $1.7 million if we enacted all of them. And of course, that would have a favorable impact upon the uh, capital uh, fund and and the, the percentage would go up. And so the next thing I wanted to highlight is organically, I, I get this question a lot, is what would be the lowest component of your uh, reserve funds making all the assumptions out to the right? So at the end of next year, we, we are estimating we'll still be in the 24 and a half range, 24 and a half million dollar range for actual funds. Uh, we do have some big spends, including uh, Grandview next year. So the lowest part we go to on an actual fund basis is just still about $20.5 million. And then uh, we've talked earlier about what does that percent mean. For those that don't know, last week the uh, governing board in a workshop uh, plans to vote on an approval to take our required FFB percent to be no lower than 40%. And if you glance to the right, we don't uh, approach that anywhere in our 10-year projection. So that's uh, what I had to communicate on the reserve funds. This I believe I hit all these items during my uh, presentation. And here again, uh, I think Bill alludes to uh, a very, very sentinel point on this slide is how many times when you uh, approach 0% do you see in the aftermath where years and sometimes two to three years where you have to make up for that. So our opinion is that the 3.5% goes mostly to cover mandated costs and 
some costs that are outside of our realm, such as insurance, and uh, that's what we're proposing at this time. Thank you, Pete. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, please email us at questions at suncitywest.com. We'll give that a, a few minutes to uh, get those questions in. The only one we have so far is um, asking for an explanation of the scoring system at the sports pavilion. Well, I could take that one. Uh, the current vector is what the name of the system is called. It uh, has been normally replaced on a seven-year cycle. It is at that uh, cycle the at this current time venture. with the 2021 budget. It's my understanding through Barry Hardesty, our bowling director, that there's a frequent, I mean, frequent number of scoring resets, shutdowns. Uh, the playability on that is, is not good. And uh, as Bill also alluded to, this is, for the most part, funded over the next several years with a modest increase in the uh, bowling fees. That's the only question we have so far. So we can wait. We can answer via email later. Doesn't look like any more coming in. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your opportunity and, and your attention. Um, we will answer any and all emails that come our way, so please uh, fire some back to us. We'd love to be able to share that with you and with our governing board as we move forward to uh, attempt to get this budget approved. And so we'll be open uh, throughout this week, and I believe on the 15th, um, the governing board will also be seeing a, a uh, presentation similar to what you've heard today and uh, trying to move this program forward. Once again, uh, thank you very, very much for your time. Stay safe, stay well, see you soon. Co-recording is off.